Friday morning, everyone. We made it to the end of another week. Is it true that, um, is the choir like doing recording this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Chamber? Chamber choir. Oh, yeah. Just a chamber choir. Yeah, we're going to do this studio. Yeah. It's a studio that's like a bar or something. Is that in town or is that somewhere? It's somewhere in Whistler. Yeah. Outside of Whistler. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. How about that? Well, I hope you enjoy that and have some fun doing, doing that. <laughs> I've got your quizzes returned to you. And uh, so what I'd like to do is, first of all, begin, as usual, with the homework assignment you have for today. So take out that handout, unless you have it out already. And I'd like to see if you have any questions about any of the part writing or any of the Roman numeral analysis or any of the sequence identification on this sheet. Um, the first two sections, A and B, that was where the most work was, although section C, although you could get that basically from your handouts on the sequences, uh, I would like you to start memorizing these. I would like you to start memorizing these. So how many harmonic sequences have we learned today? Eight, that's right, four fifth sequences, and then four five six type sequences. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so how do you do with the, uh, especially sections A and B? I struggle with B. Do I have trouble trying to figure out what the uh, first chord was? Okay. I ended up getting a minus four and starting. Oh, okay, so, yeah, the first chord is really just supposed to be the first beat, and you don't really have all the notes of the triad there. Yeah. So I would say in section B, the first chord, I think, is a four chord. Oh, sorry. Yeah, capital major four, because yeah. uh -huh, we're in A major. Mm -hmm. Right? And then that's where the sequence starts. Yes, that's exactly right. And I don't think I had to analyze all the chords of the sequence. No. Yeah. So then I asked you to analyze the second to the last chord and then come up with a possible final chord. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, any specific questions? Yeah. Can I take the last uh, three chords on uh, part A? Or like the, like not the, the last one, but the... So the top section? Yes, sorry. Okay, last. The, the three before the last chord. Three before the last chord? Yes. Okay, so um, if I think I know what you're asking about, yes. you're asking, I, I have a C sharp E and G on that, on that part of the beat. Okay, so C sharp E and G. And I'm in the key of, by the way, I'm in the key of B minor here. So I know it's going to be in a strange bass position for us, but what Roman numeral would this chord get in the key of B minor? It's two. And is it major minor augmented or diminished? It's diminished, but yet it's in root position, which is odd. But because it's within the framework, the context of a harmonic sequence, it's okay to have a root position diminished triad. So what I have for that chord is two diminished in root position. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes? one, uh, the inner voices can actually be part written a few different ways, um, but I think no matter how you try it, what I was getting is I was getting some pretty big leaps in the inner voices, yeah. and that's, that's okay, again, in the context of the sequence. I'll see if I can show you, show you why right off. Whoa, I don't have the TVs on. Let me get the TVs on. I think there's a, there's a couple different ways I look that, that I find that the patterns can stay intact. But again, I had to use some pretty big, wide, large leaves. Okay, so if we just look in the box here, I put two possibilities for 
Uh, I mean, for the second chord. So, what I did is, in the first chord, I had a B in the alto and an F sharp in the tenor. And then, what I did was, from the B in the alto, I leap, I left, I you say that I skipped, all the way down to F sharp, which is down fourth. And in the tenor voice, I, I went from my high F sharp all the way down to C sharp, which is also a loop down the middle fourth. And I figured, I found out when I did that, then I could start the next patch of chords on G and D, in the alto and tenor respectively, and then I could leap down the fourth again, and leap down the fourth again, so they're still following the pattern that they established in the box with the first two chords. And there's another possibility I found. You can actually go from B to C sharp, and then in the tenor you can go from F sharp and stay on F sharp, but then you have to leap down pretty far to go out of the box. Um, and that is, I would have to go from C sharp down to G, which is again a leap of a fourth. So either way, I'm, I've been getting some leaps of, of fourths, some large leaps. So I didn't do that. Yeah, you're supposed to, whatever you, whatever you use for the inner voices in the box, in my box, I don't know if you have a box around yours, no. But for the first two chords, that establishes the pattern. And that pattern has to be repeated, just at different pitch levels, throughout the entire sequence. That's the whole purpose of how a harmonic sequence works. Did you have a question? Yeah, I did something completely different too, and I don't know if it's right or not. Okay. Um, I guess what I'll have to do is I'll probably have to look at it. Um, can you show me? Can you show me at, at the end of class? Yeah. I mean, we'll go over this in a little more detail, but um, yeah, the the main the main point of a harmonic sequence is that whatever you put in all the voices, they they form the first two chords, and those first two chords I say is the original pattern or the model. And then that has to be uh, repeated at different pitch levels uh, as, as the sequence goes on throughout yeah, the sequence. I was able to do that, but okay. I was able to include, like, okay. I was a little bit for my very first chord. Okay. I couldn't tell. You might, you might be able to have found a way to get a different pattern. Okay. And again, you know, the, the, the part writing rules are a little more lax in harmonic sequences. It's just you can't write parallel fifths or octaves still. And you shouldn't be writing augmented seconds in the melody. But our melody is already given to us anyways. So yeah, I'd be interested to look at that probably at the end after class, just to see if you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Good. Other questions before I go on? Are you, how are you doing with um, remembering the bass lines for these eight harmonic sequences? Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a half sheet quiz on the, 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 base, the base lines of the harmonic sequences. It, don't worry, it's, it's, um, it's not multiple choice, it's matching. So I was wondering if, if there are no more questions at least about this right now, can we do the quiz and then can we come back to this and I can go over the answers in a little more detail. So, again, this should only take about five minutes, and all you need is a pencil, and again, it's, it's magic, that's all it is. Let's get started. Just do your best.
okay, we're not supposed to use our homework for this? Yeah, homework has to be put away. This is just by memory. Let's take a look uh, one more time at the uh, homework that you have. I already started showing the uh, possible part writing, although you may have found a different way to get the inner voice to work harmonically with the chords you needed and also create their own sequence or fit into a repeated pattern. So, um, so I talked about uh, the, there's a there's a very good chance that you'll get some large leaps in the inner voices, um, but then again, you may have done found another way to get it. Um, the doubling isn't really so important for these chords, just as long as the notes fit in the harmonies. And these are the harmonies right here. We have minor one, we have minor five six. Remember in a sequence in minor keys. The lower seventh scale in the UK is used until you get to the dominant at the cadence, which is over here. So that's why I have a minor five six, capital six, capital three six, minor four, minor one six, and two diminished in root position that we talked about. And then the sequence ends there because the bass pattern changes. It does not continue to go down by step, but it goes down by the leap of a third. And so this is our standard cadence here, 565 to 1. Okay? Uh, I talked about how the uh, whatever you write for the inner voices in the, for the first two chords needs to be that same pattern needs to be used for the second two chords and so on and so forth, just at different pitch levels so that it fits in the harmonies. By the way, mine is not showing on the screen what type of harmonic sequence is this. Descending by six, right? Because the bass goes down by step. That's exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, notice the odd chords. We talked about that this is okay. In fact, many of you got this on the quiz that I just returned at the beginning of class. I mean, very rarely do we ever see a minor five in a progression. So there is um, a three six. That's a very strange, bizarre, rare chord. 
and uh, two is diminished in root position. That's pretty rare, that, that base position of that core. Um, I would like to read this on the screen so I can maybe at least play this on the piano so you can hear how mute the harmonic sequence sounds. Well, I see the piano got turned around. I think it's going to be a battle of which way does the E space the whole semester. So we're in B minor. a little blip in 
an otherwise 11 and a half minute piano concerto movement by Mozart. But this is, <laughs> this is a quick harmonic sequence. It only takes a few seconds. Um, let's listen to it again because it's just so, so quick. Same sequence. 
Now, Mozart and Haydn were known to uh, exchange letters, to communicate with each other. They were contemporaries. They lived at the same time. They may have even shared some compositional things. Maybe one got an idea from the other. Who knows? Maybe they don't. They didn't. Maybe they just. It was coincidence that they used the same segment of the same harmonic sequence. But I find it kind of interesting. I find it interesting. Um, let me go take this to the piano one more time. You'll hear that it sounds pretty. It's actually in the same key <laughs> as the Mozart example as well, isn't it? In A major. So it sounds kind of similar, just not the same. Something that the Tin Man sings in the Wizard of Oz? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it would be the Scarecrow. The Scarecrow sings. He says, And my head I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching. If I only had a brain, you've heard that too, probably. Have you never heard of it? Oh, you haven't seen the Wizard of Oz. It was scary. Oh, well, you yeah, have the beginning maybe with the tornado and all that stuff. Anyways, this is, this is classic. Wizard of Oz came out in 1939. That long ago. And I wanted to show you a little bit about this passage. Um, if you can, let's see. Can you take a look? Uh, I know, do we have any low brass players in here? Okay, there you go. What is this note way down here with two letter lines below the bass staff? That's a B flat. That's right, that's a B flat. Okay. Now, what's the next bass note in the bass measure? That's a C. Okay. So we just have two notes that are ascending by step. But we have 5-6 technique going on with the bass in the tenor voice. And I talked about this last class. So this F in the tenor above the B flat is a fifth. And then it moves up to a G, and that creates a sixth, which is a different chord. Then in the next measure, everything moves up a step. It's a fifth above the C. And then this one is A. It's a sixth above the C, which makes another chord. So we basically have a two-measure segment of still the ascending 5-6 sequence. That same one again. And these are the four chords we get. 4, 2, 6, 5, 3, 6. And then the composer ends or stops the sequence to go into some kind of cadence, 5, 1. Do you see, though, even though we just have two bass notes, do you see how the bass goes up by step? And there's 5-6 motion above that in the tenor. And that's enough for us to identify that this little two-measure passage contains an ascending 5-6 harmonic sequence. Now, let's look at the, the Roman numeral chain in our huge ascending 5-6 harmonic sequence. What's the first chord in the 5-6 sequence? Four. Then the next one's 2-6. Then five and 3-6. Is there a similarity between the passage that this composer is using and the one that Mozart and Haydn use? Hmm. Do you find that? I find that kind of neat. I find that kind of interesting. So it looks like the ascending 5 6 sequence, certain portions of it anyway, were uh, kind of relished or cherished by composers. Because a lot of composers used parts of that sequence. So we have a sound something like this.
We talked about that last semester. That's the 
kind of rhythm I want for the entire sequence. What we need to do to compose this new melody is we have to make sure that the melody for the first two chords fits with the harmonies and that when we repeat it again at different pitch levels, uh, it doesn't create any part rate errors. So, um, let's see if I can get another chord here. What I want to do is I want to be ultra careful about what the melody is going to be over these first two chords. Okay. If we can make sure that the melody works with these and doesn't create any uh, part rating problem, then when we repeat it at a different pitch level and at a different pitch level, etc., etc., it should be free from error. Be free from error. Okay. Now, this is the uh, this is the advice or the guidelines to use when the, you compose a new melody. Um, use chord tones primarily, if not exclusively. You can use a non-chord tone here or there if you want. But I would stick with chord tones mostly. The majority of the notes that you write would be tones that belong in these two chords here. Okay. Now, let me show you an idea of, or something that, of, a way not to write this. <laughs> let me show you what not to do first, and then we'll show, I'll show you what you can do. Let's say that my melody looks like this, and I got to use this rhythm here. So I decide to do a rhythm or a melody. You know what? I'm getting rid of this too because I'm out of it. Let's do this. A, B, A, G. Let's say I wanted to use that for my melody. Just to see, okay, <laughs> um, does A fit into a D major chord? Yes. Does E fit into a D major chord? No. Can I explain this E as one of the non-chord tones where we've learned and that we're familiar with? Approach by a leap, left by a leap? No, there's no non-chord tone we ever learned that's approached by a leap and left by a leap. So even though this is a non-chord tone, my, my, I have a question about that. It's inexplainable. What line chord tone is it that you're writing here? See, this is what not to do. Okay. Does A fit into an A C sharp E chord? Yeah. Yep. Does G? Not really, but we can we can treat it as a passing tone, right? If we do the next one. See, if this is going to be my melodic model, you see how this note in the bass outside of the red box is a third below the first note inside the red box. So that means the first note of this should be a third higher than the first note of this pattern. Right? Because if these, are, these two notes are a third away, then these two notes should be a third part. Right? So if I, if I continue doing this, then I get something like as follows. I get this, and I get this, and I get this. And then I would do it again, and I would get something like this, and this and this, and this. And let's just see what happens. First of all, you see how this nine chord tone didn't belong or fit? We couldn't explain it. Well, this is a nine chord tone again. Does it fit into a BDF sharp chord? No. Can we explain it? No. Because it's approached by step and left by step, or approached by lead, left by lead. So here's another passing tone. Here's another non-chord tone that's not going to be explainable in its own harmony. And then last but not least, look what I actually created without knowing it. C sharp to B, G to F, parallel fifths. And so now I've got, since it's there, then there, it's also going to be here, A to G, E to D. And it's also going to be here, like my next note, whatever, it's going to, it's going to create parallel fifths again. See, this is absolutely what you don't want to do. You want to be careful to avoid this. Okay. Now, let's come up with a better melody that works in this red box that is free from error and that can be repeated or duplicated at different pitch levels throughout the sequence. Okay. So, let me get my bar line back here. How about we take a melody and we do something, we create our own melody that does something like this. 
Notice the first beat is 1, D major. Does F sharp belong? Yes. G doesn't, but I can explain that as a passing tone. In the next beat, the harmony is 5, 6. Got to check my notes in the melody. Does A fit into A, C sharp E? Does E fit into A, C sharp E? Aha, yeah. Okay. So this looks like right now it's free from part writing errors. Let's go ahead and duplicate it now at the different pitch levels. How far, where, what's my next note that I start on here? Does anyone know? D, yeah, how did you know that? Yeah, because if the first bass note and this bass note are a third away, then the first, my, my next pattern that I'm going to write is starting in third lower. Okay, good, I agree. So then we have bum, 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 bum. And there's my passing tone again. And then we do it one more time, it looks like. Starting the third lower. Get down to A. There's my passing tone. You see how the first note down the third starts the third down. Just like this one compared to this one compared to this one. Because we go into two in two chord units. And there, let's see, what's the what's the next note gonna be? If I continue the sequence, down the third from this one, it's going to be a G. But now, looks like I'm breaking the sequence. I'm getting out of the sequence. So now I can write whatever I need in the melody, <laughs> barring the fact that I don't need any parallels or anything, but just to get to the end. Just to get to the end. Maybe I'll do, let's see here, G. something like that. Um, maybe let's just do something like this and then get down to a D. Because this fits into this harmony and there aren't any parallel fits or octaves between those two voices. Okay, so now I wish I could have the old version up, but the version that I started writing, what not to do, this is what that would sound like. It sounds a little crass.